Welcome to Remember 64, where this week we get ready to crumble! Welcome to the show, everyone, whether this is your first time to Remember 64 or you are a returning listener or viewer, if you're looking at the YouTube version of this. My name is David Petrangelo, and there is no way I'm ready to crumble. I'm not some old, crusty, Play-Doh, sentient being. I'm fresh, I'm squishy, I'm flabby, and I can be easily molded. That's my body type. And I'm Jiggy Lookback. Clay Fighter! I'm gonna punch, I'm gonna kick, and then I'm gonna do some tricks! Huh! Clay Fighter! Let's go! <laughs> yeah! Pumped up! Pumped up! Oh my god. Um, this this week, uh, I'm uh, I'm surrounded by YouTube creators, uh, because Jiggy, you and I are now also joined by a third person on this episode, Dead Forge. How are you, sir? How's it going, guys? Let's get sculpting. Ooh, Ooh, I like it. I like it. There I we like go. It. Yeah, there it is. There we go. <laughs> um, yes, uh, if if anyone happy has, to be you. Yeah, awesome, awesome. So so great that we can have the three of us together. Um, you know, there's uh, when this episode is releasing. If you're not hearing it when it first comes out, um, we are picking this for a particular reason. I'll get to that in just a second. But if you haven't guessed yet, we are talking Clay Fighter sixty three and a third and. Sculptor's Cut, which is a very rare game, but we were able to at least get some time with it uh, through emulating. So we'll talk about both of those games this week. And um, one of the reasons why we picked this is because there are two holiday winter characters in this. There is Sumo Santa and Bad Mr. Frosty, which uh, face off against each other in these games. So we figured, you know what? There's not a whole lot of, you know, there isn't like some Santa game or very themed Christmas or holiday season game on the N64. Why don't we just get two iconic characters that are kind of mean and look weird and just fight each other? Clay Fighter, why not? Good excuse to play it. So, um, absolutely, freaking lootly. Absolutely. Like, like uh, quintessential what, what the Christmas. Name? <laughs> what was that the the one character um the, with the pumpkin head? Oh, name. it's Ichibod Clay. Yeah, 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 yeah. There we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I played as that guy. I played as that character a decent amount. I thought the moves were like. I did too, yeah. actually. Uh, was, I don't know. He, he was actually pretty good. fun. He was yeah. the first one I picked when I was playing it earlier. Oh, okay. Yeah, there we go. Um, we'll, we'll get into characters. We're gonna get into our time with it before, now, all of that kind of stuff. Uh, one of the reasons, again, why we had Dead Four John is because you said you had a history with this game, so that's great. Always fun to to sort of bring people on that had uh, uh, history with this uh, back in the day as well. Um, but but yeah. before that, Jiggy, do you want to cue it up? We have a soundboard item for this as well. We have a history book what? soundboard item. <laughs> the history book? Yeah, does it is it show up in the soundboard? Do you, it should. Do you, do you mean... I'm learning! We're heading back to October <laughs> of 1997. There it is. Yay! <laughs> that was great. That was great. We are. I knew it was there the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Built up suspense. Um, so yeah, so let's let's get into a little bit of the history and development of this game or these games, I guess. Um, you know, there's not a ton to say about them. I think a lot of what the discussion is around these games in general, at least from my understanding, is that there's two different versions, and a lot of people don't really know why. You know, it's sort of like this weird thing where they only came out less than a year from each other. What would be the reason for that? Why are they so expensive online if you want a copy of it? Like, stuff like that. Um, but uh, it was made, 63 and a third, and Sculptor's Cut, uh, made by Interplay Studios. I think that name sort of rang a bell when I was looking up the development of this, but the, the logo really hit me when it popped up on the screen when I played it. I'm like, oh yeah, I know, I know this. And... That's because they've had their hands in a ton of games, like over a hundred when I looked one up the, the list. One of the biggest 90s computer game developers. Exactly. So Dead Forge, before we hit record, you were mentioning some of the big titles 
and franchises they had their name in. What were some of the ones that sort of popped into your head that you knew about? Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, you know, the Fallout series, Baldur's Gate. That's it. I can't. <laughs> but, but I can't it, think of any of those, actually. But but those there are, are others. Those are not huge. Popping in. Those are huge. Like, yeah, but those are the biggest ones. For those sure. are the biggest ones. Exactly. So now, of course, as we sit here currently in 2023, when we record this, um, Baldur's Gate 3 is one of the biggest games of the year. One of the most highly rated, enjoyed, yep. you know, massive game. They made the first one. They also helped create the first couple of Fallout games, like before they were taken over and and created the way that they are now by Bethesda and everything. Like yep. this studio has a huge, huge pedigree. There are some stinkers, and there's a decent amount of them as well. Uh, they also had their hands in the Carmageddon games, um, which uh, at least the yep. one in the '64 is very bad. I'm not going to beat around the bush about that. Um, but uh, I don't know, Jiggy. Do you have any like history with any of these kinds of games, like? even like early fallouts or anything like that? Or is it just like, they're just, uh, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what I do have history with. <laughs> so interplay Titus kind of same thing because Titus bought him out. Right. Mm -hmm. And I had a very particular game on my game boy. And that was Titus, the Fox. Oh, it was their mascot and it was a little platformer. And I just remember you had to go collect keys and open doors and it was cool. It was, I, I don't remember it being particularly good, but I don't remember it being particularly bad either. It right. was just one of those games that one I had on my Game Boy. Yeah. Still to this day, I was going to pull it out of the closet to show it on screen, but I opened my closet and I was like, there's a lot of stuff in here. And I gave up. <laughs> <laughs> Not worth it. It's okay. It's all right. We can show yeah, and tell. Yeah, I was like, I'll, I'll, just, say, I'll just talk about it. <laughs> I wouldn't say that I have like a lot of history with Interplay per se, but you know, it hit me. They also did Wastelands. Like they were the developers oh, behind oh. Wasteland as well, which okay. is probably one of the most impactful, like post-apocalyptic anything ever. Yeah. I mean, it inspired Mad Max, Fallout, and pretty much the post-apocalyptic genre as a whole. Yeah, yeah. So that, so that, that's the thing, right? Like they, they have their hands in a bunch of different types of games as well. I would say, oh, yeah. I would say Fallout and Baldur's Gate. Maybe it's, it's you know, there's similarities well, they were, there, but you know. yeah, and but they were also, uh, they were behind Earthworm Jim, right? Yeah. Which is which is why uh, he pops up. Uh, I don't know which Earthworm Jim. I don't know if it's it, all he's, of them. Wait, wait, wait. Interplay. He's in sixty three and a third. Yeah. He's in. He's in. Oh uh, no, he's the one in Sculptor's Cut. Is he not? I believe he is. Um, he's in. He's in both. He's in both. Okay, I mean, <laughs> yeah, he's in both. I, yeah, I played both, and now Interplay I, was I got uh, mixed up. <laughs> they were not a developer of Earthworm. They were one of the publishers. The publishers, of Earthworm. right? Yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. Earthworm one of the Jim. like six. Earthworm Jim comes as Interplay is looking to develop new TV and film projects based on their video game properties. November 18, 2021. That was like a while ago. What? But still. What's happening? That's still. Wait, uh, what? Earthworm or Interplay currently owns the rights to Earthworm Jim, I think. Ah, and that's one of the tricky reasons yeah. why we don't see Mr. Jim around anymore. Because, <laughs> because Interplay came back. They're like a new studio once again. They were reformed because uh, they have their hands in... Um, some boomer shooters and stuff like gotcha. that. Some more old school first person shooters oh, that are coming man. out yeah. recently. Well, because I do have plenty of history with Earthworm Jim. That's oh, my yeah. boy right there. Oh, yeah. And we're, oh, we're definitely yeah. going to be Go playing that, that 64 game for sure at some point. <laughs> I'm so ready for it. <laughs> I'm so ready for a game that's probably not good, or at least so I hear. Um, okay, so uh, 63 and a third was also, interestingly enough, supposed to also come out for PlayStation, which I didn't realize. I just associated this with the Nintendo console, it was supposed to be called Clay Fighter Extreme, and it was supposed to come out at the same time, but it was not ready, so they just completely canceled it. It wasn't delayed, it wasn't, you know, pushed back or any of that, it was just, we're not doing it, we made it for the 64, it's not going to be ready for PlayStation, let's just say, screw it, we're not going to make it. So th that's a little unfortunate, I think, you know, having something that's a bit of a parody, which is exactly the point of this game, or these games... Yeah, it's supposed to be a parody of fighters. Um, we can talk about more in details as to if mm -hmm. that's successful or not uh, in a little bit. But um, I also heard that it was really hard for them to make the 3D backgrounds look the way they wanted to on the PlayStation for whatever reason. And there, there were multiple like they were basically weighing the pros and cons of each version, and they decided the Nintendo 64 was more geared toward what they wanted to make with this game. So they've had their team focus on that. And they, they had two teams, right? And they had their main team focus on the 64 version, and then they had the minor team focus on the PlayStation version, and then kind of just 
That you know that actually makes a lot of sense though, given the the 3D tech for the 64 and the PS1. The the original PlayStation is not as well known for the 3D tech as the 64 is, because mm-hmm. the 64 a lot of times had better you know implementation of that. It was mm-hmm. like I don't know if you guys ever played Shadow Man, but it was yep. really well known as a PlayStation not, game. But, I want but to. it also <laughs> came out on the 64. Yeah, and the 64 is like the definitive version of it until the obvious remasters recently. Gotcha. Got Better than PlayStation the Dreamcast? One version. I don't know. That's debated, I guess. But I never played that one. Some people actually one. really, really like that one. So, but it seemed like sixty four was the most loved one. Um, it, it had, it even had some uh, cut stuff that was not in mm. the other versions of the game. But it oh, also crazy. just played better than the ps1 version which was like slower more clunky it wasn't as good looking either it was a little bit more mm-hmm. fuzzy and stuff but that could have been there obviously had to be multiple teams developing out of the same studio which probably could have cut things thinner and they just kind of sure. had to prioritize one over the other yeah, yeah. It, it really seems like with the playstation the big draw is the cds right just having yeah. that extra storage space but other than that uh and i just memory in general, I would yeah. say, because even the memory speed on the 64 is just, it's utter garbage, but everything else about the 64 was superior. Yeah. Was yeah like, which, wh- I mean, that kind of is like, you know, I say that about 3D tech, but, you know, we also got Spyro on the PS1 and we got Crash and stuff like that, Absolutely. which are obviously awesome in that regard as yeah. 3D platformers. But yeah. I think there was just something about um, when it came outside of the platformer area, the 64 really shined. I mean, if you go to like, a golden eye and different mm-hmm. games like that just the way they were using it was a little bit more you know a little bit better they just they didn't have quite the the graphical prowess that ps1 had though and if you want to hear all the history on golden eye definitely go check out the episode we did uh that that was that was an amazing episode and dave what did you want to share about the golden eye episode what was it was it your most shared episode ever it was so as of 2020 in 2023 it is the most shared episode that the show has had from day one, honestly. Um, so it's it's the one that's, I get somehow, you know, the whole like Spotify wrapped thing that happened because I upload the, the show through that service. Um, it calculates it somehow. I don't know. And it says that the GoldenEye episode was the most shared one that the show had wonder, this year. But wonder also if it got a, last year. if it got yeah. a boost from the re-release of GoldenEye. It was it was all around that time, like it was just I think like a month after okay. or something when it released. Yeah. We, we had a great guest. It was. It's a great episode. It's just it's Goldeneye, you know, like it's just. Goldeneye. I'm in it. So, and, yeah, what Jiggy's in it. So, <laughs> so, so uh, speaking of Goldeneye, have you, I mean, that's a little off topic, but have you seen uh, Agent Sixty Four? I have. I have that on my wish list. That is something that I am. I yeah, That is on on my queue. So um, looks and, very good. Yeah, it's like a, a modern, not modern version, but modern ish take on yeah, yeah, uh, on what golden eye and and perfect dark was but with sort of like some newer ideas and stuff so yeah, um, yeah, yeah. it looks it looks pretty cool i mean that's someone that it's like if you kind of like it was more modern like perfect dark but trying to be yeah more golden eye yeah, yeah it's and it's still trying to be like a you know mid to late 90s type of game it just looks a little mm-hmm flashier a little cleaner or something but still kind of blocky yeah, yeah. it still kind of looks like it feels the same oh, way and stuff, oh here's so. a here's a yeah. good opportunity we're talking about first person shooters for a second yeah kind of like to go back to interplay for a quick minute they also just they're not done with making bad games they just released <laughs> kingpin remastered and apparently it's pretty bad oh, so. <laughs> nice <laughs> haven't even heard of it maybe that's a good thing <laughs> Well, um, apparently the okay. Well, to put it into perspective, the original was made by the people who made Redneck Rampage, which also uh, wasn't well known as a good game. So I I remember playing the demo of that over and over again at a buddy's <laughs> place. Um, it is yeah. a weird, weird yeah. effing game. I mean, it, it's both of them seem to be like so those. Strange. They're kind of like cult classic first person shooters, but yeah. they were never regarded as good. Yeah, yeah. I don't think it. I, I don't remember even by the good. fans. <laughs> yeah, even by people who like it. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Um, okay, yeah. so 63 and a third, Sculptor's Cut, they're, they're kind of the same game. We'll talk about a little bit of the differences. Um, but before we do that, I want to make sure that we, I don't know, Dead Forge, if you saw it, or Jiggy, if you did, when you were, if you played it or not, but I have the intro to Sculptor's Cut, because one of the differences that Sculpt- I have watched, it. it's amazing. It's great. So <laughs> one of the differences that Sculptor's Cut has over 63 and a third is that they created like this musical intro and sort of gave you an idea yeah. of what the story is, I guess. Um, uh-huh. 
so I'm gonna I'm gonna open that up. I th it should work. Let me just grab it here. Hang oh, yeah, on. I'm, I'm Turn the sound on. If you guys can't hear it, let me know. But I'm going to hit play, and it should work. A meteor crash one fateful day turned my little creatures into clay with heroes bent on doing right and twisted foes up for the fight. Clay fighter. One to one, they set the stage. Clay fighter. Pounding clay is all the rage. That may have been all to the tail, but Doctor Kiln planned to prevail and re-release the meteor's goo and set more fighters on the loose. Clay fighter. They punch and kick, and they do tricks. Clay and some are made as hard as brands. So can bridge from ear to ear, clay moto, I'll just quakes in fear, but none of our heroes have their way and force the evil goons to pay. Clay Bito, blow by blow, no turning back. Clay Bito, living but on the attack, but who will win the final match? What a great nice. segue from that intro into the main menu yeah that's awesome to me so yeah so basically mr bad mr frosty just s smokes the screen and cracks it open it it, it looks pretty it looks like kind of a you know it's obviously just a goofy it i'm playing the game now we are s sitting here and watching you just just a heads up you're gonna watch me get my ass kicked multiple times because i first started playing this game i sucked i was terrible so anyways that's what we're watching <laughs> so I just got done playing 63 and a third, like, you know, not that long ago. And so the sculptor's cut looks graphically a little bit better. I it think it's a little cleaner. A little bit yeah, it's a more, little Yeah, a little, it also has a little bit more of a cartoony flair to it. Mm -hmm. And the camera angles are different. Um, Boom. That's interesting. Just got my ass kicked. See? Boom. That was quick. I hit, hit the guy like once. Mm -hmm. I'm so bad at this game. Um, it also looks like it has more characters, too. It does. It does. There's, a, there's a couple more characters. So, um, okay. So, Clay Fighter Sculptor's Cut uh, was released as a blockbuster video rental exclusive only in yeah. North America on May 15th yeah, of 98. So yes, this is America. Merca. This is... Um, <laughs> Merca. <laughs> Merca. This is... Uh, as the Canadian says that, like I should be. Um, <laughs> America. Right, you're North American. Yeah, whatever. Um, I, yeah, I mean, we technically we had we had Blockbuster. I I would be surprised if more than five copies were in Canada at the time. Um, so so this came out less than a year after, um, and because of this, like this is similar to the Indiana Jones and the Infernal Machine game that I've also covered on the show. It wasn't exclusive to Blockbuster, but this was. So if you look up what you would pay if you wanted a copy of this game right now. Um, I went oh, on, it's it's up there. Yeah, I went so I went on price charting, which is a sort of pulls prices from eBay and other sort of places, and sort of gives you an average, gives you a bar of how like the value, quote unquote, has gone up or down on particular games. They have comics, they have uh, VHS and, and games and stuff like that. Anyways, price charting has a low price, low for just the cartridge at eleven hundred dollars. Nice. That is stupid <laughs> yeah like yep straight up stupid okay jiggy i, I, mean, know I you get have... that it's rare but it's also a game that's widely considered terrible not great so exactly right so no one's gonna buy it that's the thing yeah jiggy you have the document in front of you i don't know if you're looking at this part of it or not but if you're not i have a question and i want to quiz you on this if the okay. cartridge alone is eleven hundred dollars what do you guys think is the complete like if the box the manual and the game together what do you think that price oh complete in box are we talking unopened or open opened opened yeah T wild guess what it somewhere might be somewhere in the ballpark of four thousand dollars okay dead forge i'm gonna go five five you guys are both under as of according to price oh, wow. charting right now fifty two hundred dollars under yeah, fifty two hundred dollars oh, right now. So that that's is, cool. and that's an average. Yeah, you were closer. Yeah. So Dead Forge wins. You get to you get to be the next contestant on the Price Son is Right. Me. Yeah, you get to spin the wheel on the Price is Right. You're in the uh, the showcase showdown. So, <laughs> um, you don't hey. want to, yeah you don't want to copy this game because the Price is Right can't even pay for it. So, um, so so much well, for that. I mean, sorry, I got a copy of the other one. It's okay. Right. You have you have sixty three to third. Um. I okay. would show it, but it's 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 over here what, somewhere, and I can't. Why it. why it's this expensive is really just the reason because it's rare. Should it be? I don't know. Whatever. I mean, it's How, so. It's what insane. is the what is the regular game go for? I didn't really look at the. It's a normal 
you know, it's a little bit more than average, I would say. I think just because yeah. Sculptor's Cut is also inflated. Um, but I don't have it yeah, written it will, down. Yeah. But but it's it's not a few hundred dollars just for the cartridge or something crazy like that, right? So, um, okay, so some of the differences. Why they made these two games. Why they made an exclusive, whatever. I don't know. Business decisions. Who knows? But the difference is um, Sculptor's Cut got rid of the killer instinct combo system, like that sort of control mm-hmm. scheme. That's not in there anymore. Um, and there's no combo breakers as well, which is a little bit strange, but I guess if you lose one system, you kind of have to lose the other. Um, new menus, okay, It whatever. is very strange as an exclusive. It's so, it's it's so weird. weird. And then four new characters. There are new characters in this. That includes, um, I think, the, the clown character and the... Is it the is it the Ichabod? the three kids that stack on each other? Yeah, no, the one. In so Norm one, I think it oh, yeah. it looks like it plays more like a crappy Street Fighter in Sculptor's <laughs> Cut versus the original, where the original plays very much like a crappy Killer Instinct. So <laughs> it just it's just crappy. It's just <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it, yeah. I mean, it, at the end of the day. Okay, so I'll give it this. It is crappy. It looks bad even for the time, but it does have character. Okay, it's full. Of it is interesting and unique. And if it would have had a longer development time, bigger budget, and wasn't like in one of the roughest periods of the studio's life, then it might have been good. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Other differences are new voices. That's fine. Whatever. Uh, the intro sequence, like we talked okay. about. Um, there's small things like the story mode is kind of in it. I guess that's because they made the intro. They had to make a story mode. I don't know. Well, um, the in the in the first in sixty three and a third, you don't know what the story is. There is no story. It's just fight, fight. and go. And then at yeah. the end, they give you like yeah. some little synopsis of the characters if you beat it. Yes, yeah. that's but right. then Sculptor Scott right. actually gave you a plot, and they're like, "This is the plot." Yeah. So okay, well, kinda, that's improvement. That, yeah, that was kind of cool. It made yeah. it a, at least have a little bit of a story. Well, for fifty two hundred dollars, you can have a story, a box, and a manual. So that's nice. <laughs> and an inferior combat system. So an inferior combat system. Kind of yeah. a win, win, win. Yeah, no kidding, right? Um, okay, so let's. That that's kind of the gist of the way things are here. I I think. Um, you know, let let's talk a little bit about. Well, let's talk a lot about the game itself because. What? The game on the gameplay that's playing, it was the Taffy guy. Yes, and he beat he beat a, he beat you or whatever, and he's like, "This candy can do." <laughs> it's like so stupid. It's so dumb. I love it. It's so dumb. Um, the the game itself is uh, yeah, it's just a. I think. Hey, hey, there's my boy. Th- there he is. There's Mister uh, Ichabod Clay or whatever it's Ichabod. called. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> so. Him. I, I'll ask you guys first, Dead Forge. I'll go to you first. Like you had the more of a history with this game with sixty three and a third. What do you remember about it before you picked it back up, and then what did you just kind of see afterwards once you played it um, again? So when I played it was way, 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 way after its initial release. Mm-hmm. I mean, it came out before I was born. So gotcha. But um, I I played it so my my younger brother and sister both got Nintendo 64s at one point. I hadn't had one for a while at this point. And they got this game, GoldenEye, a bunch of other games. And I was like, as a big, you know, I'm a huge Mortal Kombat fan, love fighting games. And I was like, I want to play that. That's a fighting game. That looks cool, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and it was just unique. Clay Fighter 63 and a third, you know, it just stands out. And I played it and I was like, oh, this is actually really cool. And I, I mean, I genuinely had a good time with it, oddly enough. It kind of, you know, it was a very, like, Killer Instinct-like game. And I had a good time. Like, me and my siblings played it and stuff. Um, You know, and it's not, we didn't play it, like, a lot, but we played it here and there. And um, and it kind of, like, was one of those games that kind of stuck with me because of its its characters and its art style and its clay and, you know, it's unique and different. But that wasn't, it was about the only thing, you know, because, I mean, it didn't have a story, really. It didn't have much more than just fighting it didn't i mean had very little if any voice acting right and really um, just when they when they like hit each other or when the, the, the yeah that's about it in, yeah he says something and quick. it doesn't really have i, I was really have the, intros per se the characters don't shut up 
I was going to say that. Yeah, actually, actually, we have a soundboard for that. Do you want to? Do you want to? Where, where? Which one is oh, it here? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. It is. Uh, uh, is it under girly combo? Maybe it's under that one. I here think we it go. Is. Little girly combo. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Right. So, well, they yeah they have that kind of stuff, I guess. Yeah. And I guess they there's no get significant from... dialogue. No, no. <laughs> right. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was it was kind of interesting. And then going back and playing it, I played it earlier today, and. I mean, it still has that character, but it's. It, I can definitely now see how poorly it aged, right? Yeah. Um, and not playing it emulation, I played it on a Nintendo 64, and emulation is probably the better way to go, you know. <laughs> um, but I do like the like the combo system's genuinely pretty good. Like it's 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 pretty decent. Like right up there with Killer Instinct or something. Like it's it's pretty fun to do combos and the moves are cool, but it doesn't. It feels a lot clunkier than your average fighting game, which is not something that you want in a fighting game. And it's pretty. I don't think it runs very well either. It's so. pretty. It's pretty clunky. Like it. It. It is like. Yeah. It does. Clunky. It honestly does feel like there's pieces of clay moving. <laughs> like, like they're they're yeah. a little sticky. Yeah. You know, they stick to yeah. the ground a little bit too much. Like I don't. I doubt that's intentional, but. <laughs> Probably not, um, but maybe. Who knows? So it's interesting because I played mostly Sculptor's Cut just because it's the one that I had loaded up for the most part and whatever, right, so I played right. that. It's interesting that you say that for 63 and a third, like as much as the combo system and the fighting seems to, is probably better there because it has yeah. that Killer Instinct combo system, um, but you still felt like it was kind of chunky a bit. Yeah, I, Sculptor's Cut is very chunky. It's so weird because the changes that they made, they're like, oh, we made a Killer Instinct-like game. Let's take that away and yeah. make a Street Fighter-like game so we don't have the yeah. same type of combos and stuff. And Street Fighter's just faster, smoother, snappier. So Sculptor's Cut... Well, and and also the like the camera is uh, different. So like in the Sculptor's Cut, like you're showing right now, like yeah. it's, it's that more zoomed out Street Fighter look, whereas in 63 and a third is a little bit more zoomed in, kind of closer, like Killer Instinct, where yeah. you don't see mm. as much of the arena. And it's, yeah. you know, I mean, it also even is like semi-3D at times because the it'll rotate, like, when you're fighting. And it'll yes. kind of move like this, and you'll get different angles of stuff. Yeah, yeah, kind of like some of the rooms kind of have some corners you go yeah. around or whatever, yeah. Some yeah. of the rooms, uh, the places have, like, transitional things, right? Where you, like, yeah. hit, hit the enemy, they go flying through the wall, they go flying through the doorway. And yeah. I actually... Normally, I would love those, but in this game, I dislike those. Oh, how come? Uh, because yeah. they were like, you hit, you would hit it, you'd bounce into the other room, it would like stop the gameplay for a second to do yeah, that, yeah. and then you'd be on the other side, you could accidentally hit them back and keep them in this cycle of going through the doorway. This happened to me. This legitimately happened to me in the in the Laffy, Laffy Taffy guy, whatever he is, yeah. in that like candy factory, in that room... I was fighting the clown guy, and I, like, punched him, and he went through the door and fell, and then I was on the other side, I punched him again, he went through the door and fell. I did it, like, three times in a row, and I was like, I stopped fighting and backed away so I could get out of that corner so I would be able to continue the fight. Well, it just took it, forever. It looks, like, it looks like the sculptor's cut has some of that, um, a little bit of that 3D um, camera, because it looks like even in this it arena, does. like, you're kind of going around it. Yeah. Even yeah. though it's still trying to stay two-dimensional, it kind of goes like that. Yeah. It's a little bit less so than the original, but it's still pretty similar. It's still there. Um, you're still technically fighting on a 2D plane, but the camera kind of just like swerves yeah. in a circle is kind of what it is. Yeah, yeah. They still have the transition things. And part of the problem, Jiggy, with like the transition stuff, like in other fighting games, it's like, okay, that's cool because it does extra damage or now you're in a new area and you can do new things. And it But it doesn't really do anything in this. And the problem is too, if you knock someone through a door for example or through a wall or something like that and you keep knocking them back and forth like you said you were doing you're gonna do like no damage it's not a significant it move it yeah, yeah. It, it sucked it actually kind of <laughs> sucks yeah it's cool to see I something to different stop. but <laughs> you literally had to stop doing it <laughs> i had to stop doing it because i was getting nowhere and i was like i want to beat this <laughs> It was okay. awful. I, I, it was awful. Okay. Tell us why this was awful. I want to hear what, what your experience was. It sounds like it was awful. <laughs> okay. 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 So I, the only history I have with this, my cousins had this game growing up okay. and I went over to the house and we played it like once or twice. Okay. Okay. 
And um, I just need to get this out here. Uh, so Blob, the guy that the, was, was just on the screen. The guy, yeah, the green uh, Blob. Blob, I played as Blob because I thought it was Snot, Earthrun Jim's uh, <laughs> little buddy. And I found out that's it was funny. not like all, all my life. I've thought that snot, and I was like, "Oh yeah, Clay Fighter has snot and Earthworm Jim. Like that's awesome." And I would always play as Blob, or Snot, as I thought. And then going <laughs> back to it, realizing it's not Snot and it's an original character named Blob, my world was devastated. I instantly was like, "I'm not gonna have a good time playing this game." I was just so <laughs> upset. Um, and then if you play Sculptor's Cut, fun fact: so characters um, that are not unlockables in the first game some are unlockables in sculptor's cut mm. so like starting out i didn't have earthworm jim yeah i actually entered a cheat code to get earthworm jim but i was like annoyed that i had to do that yeah, um he's default in the original yeah exactly i wanted him i remembered him being default i remember that because my yeah. cousin said 63 and a third but i was playing sculptor's cut this time around um but my experience i remember playing it and i'm just thinking like from a fighting game perspective, like it wasn't, it wasn't bad, but it was very mediocre. I I felt like the the combo meter filled really fast. It does, and yes. I was just doing a lot of combos. But I I did our, our uh, special moves, but actually I felt I, I should rephrase that. I felt like I was getting hit with a lot of special moves, and like. You're fighting Boogerman right now. He yeah. was a terrible culprit because he would do this farting spin move where he'd go in the air. And I like every time I'm like just trying to not get chained with attacks like 40 times in a row. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I don't know about you guys, but like entering the combos and like trying to figure out what does the special move was hard for me. Yeah, oh, 100 Like, I'd be like, normally 100%. you could do, like, oh, you go left, right, joystick, A, B, or something. Like, some combination that you can kind of figure out yeah. naturally. Uh, there was none of that. I mean, I was like, I would be button mashing, and I'd be like, okay, I think it's I think it's working. I don't know. And then I'd, it'd be hit or miss. But that was one thing. Yeah, I was just, it seemed pretty inconsistent. Yeah. yeah, it just felt really sluggish. What was cool, though, to me, and this is just because there's... I don't play a lot of fighting games on the 64. Um, oh, we will. Obviously, <laughs> Smash Bros. You yeah, will. right. Obviously, Smash Bros. But, like, this really is the only other fighting game that I... I don't even know what else is on there besides, like, 3D ones. I mean, like, 2D fighters like this in the traditional sense. Yeah, yeah. Like, fighting games. Um, I I realized that the 64 this controller is laid out... This Killer Instinct in Mortal Kombat, probably. Oh, yeah, Killer Instinct. I yeah, forgot Mortal about that Kombat, one. Mortal Kombat, yeah. Um, and I, I don't think I've played Mortal Kombat on the 64. I played it on other things, but not the sixty-four. Yeah. Play, play the um, play the gold gold edition or whatever it is, yeah, trilogy gold. or whatever. Don't play okay. four. Combat four is not very gold, good. Yeah. <laughs> four is not good. Okay. I, uh, yeah, gold is better than four. Yeah. Looking at the controller, like it's this realization I had because I was thinking about the controller and just how many different ways you can hold it and use it, and yeah. the way they uh, design the controller. And I'm like, this is perfect for fighting games. I can use the D-pad. I hold yep. it's got six button lay layout. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You got B left up, A down right. And I was like, that's so cool. I never realized that. And then you have an easy like R button press, which does like nothing. You just move backwards a little bit. Um yeah, I just, it's, it's that, basically that realization the, uh, is super cool. The, the sort of argument that like people liked the six button Genesis or Mega Drive controller over right. over the three right. button because it was more versatile, it was better for fighting. It's basically yeah, I was gonna the say the, one's kinda like that. I just recently got a Sega Saturn and it has oh, okay. the six buttons. It looks like yes. the looks like a like an arcade like button layout. Yeah, it does. And it's it does, pretty actually, perfect yeah. for that stuff because I have a uh, Virtua Fighter 2 on it and it's pretty fantastic. Those are good fighting games. Those fighting games are fun. Yeah. Uh, at least for for that for that era for sure. Um Also, what I didn't know there was a hand in the game. Yeah, oh, yeah. it's it's like it's like uh <laughs> is it it in uh um you can't play as it though, I don't think. Um is it You can. Oh, you can? Oh, okay. Never enter a cheat code. Oh, okay. I didn't, I don't I didn't enter any called, cheats. I, I should have played around with the cheats I was going to, and I did not. Um, oh, I did I in 63. Yeah, third, I mean, it looks like this. it's a reference to Adam's family. hand from uh, yeah, Adam's family. You get a big family. thumbs down. Yeah, you get a big thumbs down when you lose, yeah. Um, they say okay, really so stupid things when they beat you. I had, I had very little experience with this game. Um, 
I don't know if I... I definitely played the Super Nintendo version, one of them. I don't know which one. I, also, then I picked a character, pick random character for the next time, and I got the same character. I was like, really? Come on, game. Um, it happened course, earlier, too. Yeah, it's just... It's just <laughs> really? Um, I, think, I, think, I think you played Ichabod uh, Clay quite a bit. I did. I, it was the only one... So... When when I'll get to it in a sec, but Jiggy, when you were talking about like not being able to like pull off the combo stuff or whatever, it's the only one that even when I button mashed, I kind of had an idea of which one I was gonna do. It's the only character yeah. I could do it with. <laughs> All the oh, and then yep. and then Blob a little bit too, but uh, which I think probably the video will show that I, I play as Bob Blob a little bit as well. I think I recorded that. Anyways, um, I remember this series from the Super Nintendo because I spent more time in fighting games on the Super Nintendo than I did. Um, on the 64. Similar to you, Jig, I, I played a few on 64, but a lot of it was, you know, if I was going to play multiplayer against someone, it was Mario Kart, it was Diddy Kong Racing, it was Mario Party, it was those types of things, right? And this game I knew of, I knew it was about a 2D fighter, and the characters were kind of goofy and whatever, and I knew it was probably a parody, but, like, I was like, all right, I'll just, I'll try it again and, and see how it goes here since we're doing the episode. I guess I'll put myself through it. Um... I suck so bad at this, these games. I'm just so, and I think that sours my experience a bit because I do think it's, it's not a, they're not great games. I don't think, but I don't think they're, they would be as bad if I was a little bit better. <laughs> like, I think I hear you. I was all, I also suck. Yeah. I was like, I couldn't, I couldn't, I wasn't doing good. No, I, I, I went, tried to go through it at, at normal or whatever the middle difficulty is. <laughs> And you changed it to easy because I did the same thing. Hundred percent. I wasn't, to change it to I wasn't easy. really trying to beat like the ladder or whatever, but I was doing okay. But it, it just it feels like you're playing in slow motion. Yeah, and and that's um, that the, the gist of the in. yeah the gist of the gameplay is just fight, do combos, whatever, move on to the next. Year. That's fine, right? That's just the way it is. But yeah, it feels like which is fine you know i mean like that's totally kind of how most fighting games are right but exactly it's just not as engaging as others it doesn't feel as empowering as others it doesn't mm -hmm. feel as fluid or um impactful or anything really or so yeah. stylish and i think because some of the combos and because like your combo meter or your special meter does fill up a decent amount it would be nice if when you pulled those off or if you could pull them off they felt more satisfying because you can set off these you know 10 hit combo things with just one move and then it takes off a tiny lick of health it does almost nothing a regular move yeah. usually usually does more like a two hit combo usually does more and then after that i'm just sort of jumping and and trying to kick jumping and trying to punch oh low low hit yeah, i mean it just okay. that just comes down to like how much of a just like a a kind of crappy clone that they were you know i mean because yeah. they were just trying to do yeah. the the Killer Instinct meter that would usually do some cool stylish kind of move, or and, like and those look like crazy, right? And they have those were great and those yeah. were cool. They were even impressive for then, you know. Even yes, they were probably one of the first people to do something like that. Like Street Fighter didn't really do much of that. No. Mortal Kombat didn't really do that. That was kind of a very Killer Instinct thing. Now every fighting game does something like that. But <laughs> yeah, you know, Clay Fighter was like, hey, we're gonna do that, but then you know, we're gonna make two games <laughs> just yeah. a year apart that are. Two different games, but the same game, but different fighting Super styles. But... Yeah, I, I still don't yeah, understand yeah. it. Like going through it all and stuff, it's, I still don't get. Like, is there just like ideas they had that they couldn't do? Like, I don't, I don't know. I don't really get what it was. Um, but then make it a blockbuster exclusive yeah. that no one can get. <laughs> so even then, it would be hard to get because there'd be like two copies yeah, per store, I mean, maybe at the most. Um, yeah, and there wasn't very many available. Um, yeah, you know, and it's just a game that got a poor reception that it was you know deserving of so and what i what i find a little bit weird about it like minus the gameplay is that i understand that parodies i mean obviously like something like south park's a perfect example it obviously does something a little bit different now but yeah, yeah. at least around this time like late 90s it was very much like raunchy comedy sort of a little bit of a parody now it's it's much smarter than that but south park's mm -hmm. a perfect example yeah it, you know what simpsons Interplay family Guy, should just like... take some of their newfound money yeah that they are using for these new first person shooter games 
and just bring back Clay Fighters, like a like a full blown ground up remake of sixty three and a third. There we yeah. go. Yeah. Just from the ground up, baby, and just make it the best game ever. Because you can get pretty okay, good so humor out of it, all that kind of it stuff. Could, like it, it could yeah, be better. It could I be had good. to look I mean, it up. They did that. Yeah. I had to look it up because you were talking about um, just the, the raunch of humor and the South Park and stuff. So, like, the voice actors they have for this game. They yeah. have, like, Jim Cummings. Do you know oh, yeah. who Jim Cummings is? He, yeah. He's yep. like Winnie the Pooh. He's freaking Winnie the Pooh was yep. one of the voice actors in this game. Oh, my God. Um, they had... Uh, Tress McNeil, who is Lady Liberty, and High Five is the name of the hand in uh, Sculptor's Cut. Um, uh, Rob Paulson, that's who I think I was thinking of specifically. Why is that familiar? Uh, that Yako familiar. Warner, uh, Animaniacs, a lot. <gasps> Pinky, Pinky in the Brain. Oh my like, God! Like raunchy what? voices. That's I think of him. Oh which was God. funny is that they have Jim Cummings, which this was pro- would have probably been like one of the first times that he ever went outside of that kid friendly area. Right. But he would later go on to completely, completely destroy that, and uh, he would be the voice of the mask in Splatterhouse in 2010. <laughs> and he says some of the most raunchy stuff that you've ever heard in your life. <laughs> I That's never hilarious. played that. That's amazing. Yeah. And, and it's, well, a, classic, it's a pretty good game. It's a pretty classic, flawed game, uh, but it's a really good one. Dan uh, Castellaneta, I think, Ooh. is how you pronounce his name. Earthworm Jim's yeah. voice. Homer Simpson. Yeah. Same yeah. deal. Yeah. So, and, and that's that's the thing about this is like, I think if you don't really know what the game is or what they're going for, you might think maybe a little bit that it's, it could be kid friendly. I guess in some ways it is. It's not right. like anyone, there's no like actual death. Yeah. They're all just clay characters yeah. and stuff. But the humor is very adult, right? And well, or, yeah. I mean, I think I kind of get that vibe. You know, I mean, I don't, I don't think that. Like, if you look at the cartridge for sixty-three and a third, I don't think it really comes off as kid friendly per that's se. True. That's true. Um, because it kind of looks more like you're about to play like a horror game or something. Because <laughs> um, it's just got the evil snowman on the front. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah, I, mean, I, I could see. It, I, I don't think it was a well marketed game either. I, I don't know how you. Mar- that's the thing is, I don't know how you. I guess you just market it as it's for adults and the 64 was yep. not really marketed that way no. in general yeah. right? at least yeah. not consistently and to so. be fair fun machine most yeah. most adults i mean i would say i mean obviously plenty of adults had an Nintendo 64 but yeah um it was more common that most people at that point probably were not playing nintendo as much as they would have been playing playstation right um yeah, there, there's there probably, probably were more people yeah, playing PlayStation, and and for games like as this, it was too. the big console at the time, and 64 was actually not the 60 Nintendo 64 wasn't even that successful of a console as well, a whole. As compared to its predecessor, it wasn't you know it was yeah. it wasn't that close, right? But but I, it I, is in my heart. Yes. Yeah, I mean it's sure. it's a very well uh, loved and remembered console, but it was actually somewhat of a failure for Nintendo as a console but so, it's, yeah part of part of it's it honestly got wise. one of the bigger followings of their entire catalog of consoles so. yeah well because they got so many the, uh, cl- huge bangers. clay fighter characters have bios yes so that's what i wanted to look up yeah yeah i i definitely <laughs> wanted to do that where is my link that i had there hang on um oh, where is it so they had a full 12 page spread of Clay Fighter 63 and a third on Nintendo Power. Uh, issue 97 I had the bios, I had all the stages and showed you what the stages look like, like a sort of overhead view and stuff. It was yes. on the cover. Like they went all freaking out for this game. Um, was it a slow month for games or something? I don't know. But <laughs> I think, you know, like this was I mean... the only marketing the game probably had at least or at least some of the biggest marketing it had getting on the cover of nintendo power is always a big deal right that that's that's going to be something that's that's big right so i um, mean to be fair um depending on the success of the prior clay fighter games on super nintendo that's true as well as probably being some of the more well-known on nintendo minus like the occasional mortal kombat or street fighter Mm -hmm. there wasn't that many fighting games like that on super nintendo yeah so depending on the success of those old clay fighter games i would say that there's a possibility that maybe the game was hyped up quite a bit and maybe nintendo had expectations that you know it didn't quite meet 
I mean, Nintendo Power at the end of the day is is a lot of a um, uh, just a sales tactic for their stuff. I mean, that's really what it ended up yeah. being. Yeah, not a lot of like. And did they give it a sure. bad reviews. super positive review? Like it was like a ninety out of a hundred or I, something. I'll, I'll I'll look that up in a sec. Yeah, I, I'm gonna check because usually when it's a cover thing, they also have like a review. I'm pretty sure they do have a review. Anyways, part of the, part of the twelve page spread is some of the bios of these characters. Um, Let's see, which one's... Uh, uh, you know what? We were talking about Ichibod. Let's talk about Ichibod Clay a little bit. What does it say? It says, once known as the Pumpkin Knight, okay, which comes from, I think, the you know, Ichibod has since received a court order preventing him from using the nickname. <laughs> now he's really miffed. All night long, he haunts the island of Claymoto, hoping to prove himself that he's still the scariest of them all. He is neither good or bad, just frightening. He has limited special moves, but they are strong. That's an interesting little little sort right. of tidbit of info about him. That's, that's not bad, you know. Mm. I I got I have a website, uh, angelfire.com. Yeah. Shout out, I guess. I don't know. It uh <laughs> it has a different bio for him. Oh, okay. Let's let's compare. Compare notes. So it says after being exiled from C2 Judgment Clay, Ikibod <laughs> Clay went to Claymoto Isle. Despite his temporary happiness, trouble seemed to follow him everywhere. He learned that some of his friends and foes were also on the island. Feeling bitter and betrayed, he feels it's payback time. Okay. That's completely different. That's so weird. Yeah. That's crazy. I don't um, know where this comes from, but it's hilarious. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Ba- or Bad Mr. Frosty is interesting because he's kind of like the title character, I would say. He's on the covers. Yeah. All that yeah, kind of for stuff. Sure. Uh, according to Nintendo Power, at least. Uh, once known as a cold-hearted curmudgeon, Frosty has changed his tune. After a stint as a lounge singer in Vegas, he got a job flying <laughs> for Clay Fighter Air. Now he's watching out for Sumo Santa, who wants control of the North Pole. As one of the good guys in Clay Fighter 63 and a third, Frosty's goal is to stop Kiln, who is the main bad guy, which they don't really explain um, unless you read this issue. Uh, but how or play sculptor's cut or play sculptor's cut, which seems like <laughs> five people did. But how can he approach <laughs> the center of Kiln's volcanic lair without melting? So I just learned something new because I didn't uh, I didn't uh, read this till now. Um, he's a good guy, and he does not look like a good guy or act like a good guy. His name <laughs> is literally bad. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> it's so weird. It's so what strange. The heck? I know that doesn't really make any sense. So, um, you know, I, I, I think I, I'm not going to read any bios on, on these characters, but they're they're very insensitive. There's Kung Pao and there's Hoon, yeah. Hoon, how, Hoon Gen. They're not they're not oh, appropriate. Kung Pao is We're, so bad. Kung I Pao is like, just it's terrible. In disbelief when I saw it. Just, I, I mean, it, it is funny. It's just so It's bad. so bad. It's so it's, like it. You'll oh, know immediately man. that it is just not. A good... I, can I read his bio though? Because if, on this website, it's pretty funny. If you want to, yeah. It says it says Kung Pao used to be Sumo Santa's personal chef and bodyguard. The repulsive <laughs> meals he prepared and his lack of kung fu knowledge eventually got him fired. He was constantly trying to improve his skills in both areas. Unfortunately, he always got the two professions, cooking and kung fu, confused. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I like that. That's, That's actually pretty good. That is pretty good. Um, you know. It, the again, this is like Jiggy. We've run into this with a couple games. I think Pilot Wings was one of them for sure. Where like these characters are just characters, and then all of a sudden, like no, actually they have backgrounds. They have a story. They have a this. Yeah. You yeah. don't get any of that unless you have a manual, unless you look it up now, or you had Nintendo Power at the time. Um, it, it's does it change the game? No. Does it improve it? It gives you an extra laugh, I guess. But at the end of the day, the gameplay itself. Uh, the gameplay itself is just meh. It's it's just yeah. Okay, it's, look eh. the it's the amazing. Matt Matt Casamassina. I can't really say this dude's name. He he said it perfectly, right? Yes, let's do it. You know, <laughs> he predicted that sixty three and a third would remain a prominent title in the N sixty four library for years to come because the game is so terrible it sets the standard for bad. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, that that cuts deep, man. That's that that that's, is that's, that's, that's as rough. harsh as it gets. That's as harsh as it and, gets. And it, yeah, it even even it shows right here. It like after that part, it says 
like contrarily, the the editors of Nintendo Power reviewed the game both unreleased and in released forms in June and November of '97, uh, a much more positively than pretty much everybody else. Yeah. yeah so yeah. I I pulled it up. I pulled up the Nintendo Power one. Same issue, '97. Um, let's see. I'm gonna pick a couple sentences here. The characters keep up a patter of insults and jives. Okay. During the fight, using the voices from some very famous actors, like we've mentioned. And as for the fighting itself, the moves yeah. are smoothly animated and often hilarious to watch. In spite of the emphasis on comic animation, though, serious fighting fans will find plenty of moves and combos to for the game to be interesting. Um, They might look different, but I don't know. I don't know. I'm not so sure about that. I don't... Yeah. And then they say... So the, the positives and negatives on Nintendo Power at the bottom of the review. Great graphics and sense of humor. Lots of fighting arenas. Lots of special moves and hidden characters. The negative, breakthroughs are difficult to find and activate. Which apparently, to them, would have been a positive no. if they were easier. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they were pretty... Gosh. Oh, God, no. <laughs> I, got one thing to, I got one thing to say to that. <laughs> Eat cow. So it says here that someone by the name Sushi X defended the game in Electronic Gaming Monthly. That's arguing while it's it's an unenjoyable or while it's unenjoyable in a traditional fighting game sense, it makes a great party game. Um, I don't know. Does it though? Yeah. It's he says silly. the game saying the game is funny but would eventually get old. Yeah, it's um, it's funny. And also apparently it says like I don't know what this is coming from, but it, it apparently sold around 60,000 copies prior to Christmas of 97. Within a few And months. there it is. Yeah. Christmas. And so, and, and, and uh, Sculptor's Cut Happy Holidays. <laughs> only sold 20,000 20, copies. You mean they gave away 20,000 so, copies? Yeah. <laughs> They gave Blockbuster 20,000 yeah. copies. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, they gave away, yeah, it was 20,000 copies to Blockbuster, yeah. Yeah, it, so, I don't know. It sold none, I think. Yeah, it sold yeah. zero, gave away 20,000. <laughs> now you can buy three of them and it'd be the same amount as what they're, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It costs the same amount so, of money. So, I also found that in 2009, um, Interplay said that they would be updating the Clay Fighter series. Um. For the WiiWare and DSiWare services, oh. and they were so okay. So shut down. <laughs> yeah, this is it. This is interesting though. It's another parody game, right? And it's not a fighting game. Oh, okay. Um, it's not a platformer. What? It was originally going to be uh, a Call of Duty parody called Call of Putty. Oh my god! Sounds amazing. It was going to be. <laughs> the development was going to be handled by Studio Black Games um, and was headed by one of the original programmers of the original Clay Fighter game. Uh, but it looks like it It was supposed to release in 2010 or 2011 and it got canceled. Yeah. Probably for the best. Because it kept getting Probably. delayed and delayed and delayed. <laughs> Probably so. for the best. <laughs> Probably I, for the best. I so, so here's the thing. Ultimately, I don't think this game's that good. Either it doesn't matter which one. I I would mm. say, I would say that the idea to have a parody, to have different characters, original characters, or at least ones that were originally based on the original games, with a couple new ones. Having Earthworm Jim is fun. Um, you know, yeah, sure. We kind of chose this as a quote unquote holiday game because there's a bad Mister Frosty and a fat Santa yeah. or sumo Santa. Um, but ultimately, do you get? Any kind of like holiday winter feel? No, not really. One stage has snow and a castle, a snow ice castle, and that's about it. Um, and as much as I played more of Sculptor's Cut, at least the combo system yep. and stuff in sixty three and a third, I might might have felt like cheap sometimes, but it did feel more fun when you pulled it off. But I definitely got yep. my butt kicked most of the time when I played this game. So it's it's also very unforgiving, and it I shouldn't be. I, I don't know if we mentioned the claytalities, but that's the thing. We did not mention claytalities. It's only in Sculptor's Cut, though, right? Or is that in the original? There, it's in the original. It's in both, the but there's okay. there's a few more, or a couple different ones. My take on it okay. is that they're boring and they're a waste. Like they they don't do anything interesting. I don't know if yeah. you guys saw any. Um, I was having a hard time trying to get them to work. They're so hard. They're so difficult. I've always sucked <laughs> at stuff like that. 
I pulled off one. I pulled off one of Bad Mr. Well, Frosty's Well, the thing is that, like, fighting games back in, like, the 90s, early 2000s, they made it almost impossible to do fatalities and just, yeah. like, finishing moves like that anyway. I, it's I, so much easier to do nowadays. Yeah, I, I thought that, like, like if you – there would be an option where you would press L and R together maybe and they would pull it off or yeah. do back right, back I'm, right, you know – Left, right, left, right, B or I'm something, and it would be a thing. I'm curious if the know. game was a financial failure because, like, they sold 60,000 copies prior to the Christmas of the year that they released it. But, but, but that's in only 99, like, two yeah. years later, they claimed that they broke over a million copies sold. What? That's wild. That, that was their claim. I don't know if there's anything to back that up, but that yeah. was I, I I'll would, tell you what, they, and, what sold them the game. I'll tell you what sold them the game. Yeah. Okay? And it was one phrase. You ready for this? Yes. Let's get ready to crumble! <laughs> Definitely. Possible, yeah. It is pretty good. I, I See, that's another thing. That's another part I, I of the parody they, that is actually pretty good. I bet they had a good. great trailer back in the day, and they popped Interplay on it a lot, and yeah. you know... <laughs> Got people to buy it. Yeah, it's um, I don't know. Showed the PC gameplay or something, you know. <laughs> yeah, like it's. Unfortunately, I would I would say like it's fun to sort of look up, maybe you know, emulate a few rounds and stuff. But at the end of the day, yeah, I mean it's it's definitely a decent game if you want to play it for free. Right? <laughs> yeah. Um, but if you got to pay for it in any regard, I would probably not do that. You can you can do better. I so. I. I don't know if you can do worse, honestly. It's it's not very good. Um, I, I wish yeah, the I mean, execution... I, I got my, you know. my physical copy for free for my brother because he still had it. And then I was like, hey, you still have Clay Fighter? And he's like, yeah. I was like, all right, I'll give you like $20 for it. And then he was like, <laughs> no, you can have it for free. And I was like, heck yeah. <laughs> well, you know what? I, I got to say, like, having this EverDrive that I have and being able to play something like yeah. Sculptor's Cut, pretty yeah. much the only way... Yeah. That anyone's really going to be able to play it, yep. you know, at least on yep. authentic hardware yep. and stuff like that. Yeah, unless you got like way. thousands, you know, burning a hole in your pocket. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I do, but I just decided. Sorry, to, the know. jiggy bank is closed. <laughs> <laughs> um, so b- before we wrap up and stuff, guys, um, I guess uh, jiggy for you, uh, since your bank is closed mm-hmm. now. Um, <laughs> overall, what what's sort of like the final thoughts? What's sort of like the final elevator? non-pitch for this game <laughs> what'd you think play fighters is a charming funny bland mediocre fighter for the nintendo 64 you'll find some laughs but not much else i give it a four out of five but i'm gonna add half a point give it a 4.5 because it has earthworm jim <laughs> wait a four Ooh. out of five and that's out of ten or... by the way that's oh, okay. out of ten <laughs> okay i was like wait i'm five out of ten <laughs> I was like, I'm kind of losing you here. What do you, wait, what? <laughs> it's perfect. You know what's funny is that's probably the highest rated score that it ever got. <laughs> um, no, Nintendo Power. Well, what was that score, though? Nintendo what, Power. I, like I saw it was. I swear. It was. Okay, well, I, what I was seeing was like, yeah. it didn't look like anything went past like a 3.8. So they, they rated everything out of five. This is before they had like a different system where okay. they gave it like out of 100 or whatever. Yeah, that they, was before that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because oh, that wait. happened. I thought I, re- I thought I saw that somewhere. But okay, go. So in this, in this, in issue 97 anyway, gameplay and sound was 4.2. No, graphics and sound was 4.2. Okay, so they had the different different things. Yeah, yeah control was three point two. This is all out of five. Challenge was four, which I think is pretty spot on. And uh, theme and fun was three point eight. So pretty high. I I, I think those yeah. are all pretty high. Yeah, that's a little high. That's a little too high. That's, that's somewhere in the five, four out of five. Bad. Four out of five that's, average. Did, that's they, an give average a, did yeah, they give exactly. an overall score? They don't give overall. The that's where they, they changed that after issue, issue 100. So this is one of the last okay. issues that didn't have that. When they so. had to review Clay Fighter, they're like, we can't yeah. give overall Guys, scores. We have to read the, it. On. We got to yeah, change the, the system. Uh, the other, um, <laughs> like, so other outlets like IGN and all that, like, I don't think any a single review went past 3.8 by any other outlet. Yeah. So... Um, so that's, it's pretty rough. So what about you? Hey, it's got heart, it's got what's, charm, but, uh, yeah. but plain. What's is, your number? Yeah. What's your number? <laughs> My number? Yeah. Is there yeah. a number? Does okay. it exist? Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. It's, it's got the heart, the charm, nothing else. Yeah. I don't know, man. Uh, I give it a, a crisp two. 
Ooh, damn. <laughs> I give okay. it a two. Yeah. Um, so for me, so I think yeah. I think the attempt at humor and doing a a, a a parody is is cool and nice. I like the fact that I'm playing oh, yeah, for sure. characters that I don't recognize in a way that's refreshing. I mean, I kind of recognize them from the SNES game that I played, but very little experience. I'm sure if I played it then, I would have enjoyed it more than I, I do now. I don't think that Sculptor's yeah. Cut is worth having another version of basically the same game that's not as good. And ultimately, no. the gameplay is clunky. It's messy. It doesn't really work. It's honestly frustrating if you play on a higher difficulty. And by higher, I mean just the baseline normal. normal. <laughs> yeah, normal. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's a good point. And, uh, and all of that together, I'm not going to go as low as a two, but I'm going to sit somewhere around a three, I would say. It is three blobs Dang, of crusty he's play-doh. He's being generous. <laughs> Three blobs of crusty. I mean, I gave it a four point five. So yeah, I, don't, I know you. Yeah, I don't know what's wrong with you. I feel like I feel like I've played worse games than this. I feel like at yeah. the end of the day, it was a fighter and it functioned. That's I, true. Yeah, so that's you know, true. That I mean, the, I gave a little. I showed my bias. I said, I said flat out, I gave it an extra half a point because of putting yeah. from Jim in there. Which, yeah, I mean, right. I guess it deserves more for that. To be fair, I don't like I don't like number scales, so you know. Yeah, it's. I think it's a serviceable, okay, fighter. Yeah. But yeah, as yeah. someone who's played like a lot of fighting games, it's definitely the bottom of the barrel for sure. Yeah, it's it's near the bottom for sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, hey, you know what, everybody? Um, like we said, give it a shot if you want. Don't go out of your way to really search for either of these. I think sixty-three and a third is probably the better one. But if you have a chance, sure you can. But is it worth it? Eh, that's another story. Um, Let me show you guys something real quick that, yeah. that shows my fighting game credibility, okay? <laughs> Uh-oh. Oh, snap. Oh. Yeah. If you're a listener, yeah, Mortal Kombat tattoo. Mortal Kombat yeah. tattoo on the shoulder. That's a nice little <laughs> so hard to man. see. He started yeah. pulling up his shirt, and we were, like, concerned. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. I thought he was going to flex the guns, but then. <laughs> well, sort of. So he sort of did. Yeah, he sort of did. Let me show you my fighting creds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Check out these boys. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> um. All right. So. Like, uh, uh, yeah, we'll we'll uh, just like putty. Just, <laughs> they're like putty. You can putty, mold yeah. it. <laughs> you can mold it. Oh man. Oh man, I I can definitely be molded for sure. Um. All right. So if you want to find more, remember sixty four. Obviously, you can find us across social media. Remember sixty four show right across the board. Patreon as well. If you want to support the show for as little as a buck a month, you can get all episodes like this early. Um, so happy holidays. You get a somewhat holiday episode. I don't know. Something like that. Talk a little bit about Santa and Frosty. That's as, as good as it gets here. Mm -hmm. Um, but anyways, happy holidays anyways, everybody for listening. Um, and, uh, of course, uh, check out the show as well on YouTube. You can find a video version of this episode. You can find some gameplay videos. Um, you'll also see me be really bad at this game if you're watching this version, uh, on YouTube as well. So that's always fun. Laugh at me. It's fine. I laugh at myself. I'm so bad. Um, but uh, other than that, uh, Deadforge, thanks for thanks for coming on the show, man. Uh, let's yeah, man. talk a little yeah, bit about about your stuff. I'd uh, yeah, I'd love to be back anytime that you want me, man. Yeah, yeah uh, of course, I'll be here. Tell us a little it's bit about, uh, about your talking audience. about Clay Fighter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. let's uh, Clay let's... Fighter. <laughs> Clay Fighter. Um, it's actually they got like a choir. Oh. Yeah, not bad, right? Um, Deadforge, <laughs> let's talk a little bit about uh, about your stuff on YouTube. Yeah, I mean. Uh... You can find me at Dead Forge on YouTube, right? And uh, I got a podcast, uh, the Gaming Bounty Board, which is on Spotify and YouTube. Uh, you know, I do reviews, essays, a little bit of everything. So, yeah, there we go. Amazing. So, Dead Forge, you can find it across the board, and the podcast again. Uh, the Gaming Bounty Board. It, it, you'd Game look Bounty. it up as uh, the GBB podcast. There we go. Amazing, Jiggy. You got some pretty big stuff in the pipe, man. How's it going? Oh man, so many good stuff. So much. So many so good much, stuff. So many good stuff. So much good. <laughs> uh, yeah, including uh, I, I think the next tomorrow. Well, never mind about dates. I'm saying I'm doing a live stream uh, and I'm gonna play th play through some mods to experience those for the first time on some 64 titles. 
which we talked about doing in the future, which is super excited. So it's getting in preparation for that, experiencing yeah. some of these. Let, let's talk. Actually, let's. So. I completely forgot to mention that in 2024, Jiggy and I have a little bit yes. of a plan. We we don't have all the details worked out, but probably every couple of episodes or so, we're gonna play mods, unreleased games, things like that that we can emulate so that we can sort of have. We're gonna dissect them. We're gonna dissect them. We're gonna <laughs> compare it to the originals if it's a mod and play all these different types of mix Wait. of games. Um, so it's not just the library. We'll still be working through regular games, but that's going to be sort of um, off the beaten path a little bit uh, here and there. So look yeah. forward to that throughout the course of 2024. We'll tell people about more details as, as we come up with, uh, get closer to the dates and everything. Anyways, continue. That's going to be cool. Yeah. Uh, we I have a video coming out. I'm working on it right now. Dave came on my end and we did a versus video in my versus series where I compare and contrast two games within a series or within a genre. And right now, it's going to be a banger. It is Diddy Kong Racing versus Mario Kart 64. And we are going to... The definitive... Which one's the actual definitive kart racer on the 64? Spoiler alert, it's not Mickey <laughs> Speedway USA. <laughs> <laughs> That's a but pretty follow one. that up. I got some other bangers in the work. I have, I have a massive video that I just finished writing... It took me several days to write this, okay? And normally I finish a script in a day. I am mapping out and connecting the entire rare universe of games. Whoa, you So it's going to be person. in my overthinking oh, wow. series. This is probably going to be like a 20 to 30 minute video of me just nerding out about rareware. We're talking Donkey Kong, Banjo... <laughs> Uh, it's gonna be an interesting one. Jet Force Gemini, like it's it's going everywhere. It's gonna be. Man, big. speaking of that, I I've been playing a lot it. of Grab by the Ghoulies recently. Oh, Grab by the Ghoulies nice. is in there. Nice. <laughs> it's awesome. I'll be looking forward to it, dude. It's gonna be a big one. I'm really excited about that one. I like. Yeah. I'm actually but, working on my, I guess, biggest video that I've ever done in like the kind of retrospective review kind of area um nice. it's supposed to come out sometime sometime later this month so. nice sweet nice. well lots of stuff down the pipe everybody um oh yeah and uh you know if you want to watch some and listen to some pretty fun creative nerdy stuff you got the three of us and uh i would say the other there two on this podcast are probably a little bit more creative than i am but hey you know what it's all good it was fun to talk about these games <laughs> despite them not being very hey, good man. Um, Your podcast has got more production value than mine does. So. <laughs> <laughs> value is a very strong word. <laughs> hey, play fire! Hey, you guys. Play fire! <laughs> clay fire! Oh yeah, clay fighter, man. That's all right, that's everybody. Um, thanks for listening. Thanks for joining us, gentlemen. Thanks uh, for being on the show once again, and um, we will oh, see me, everybody man. soon. Goodbye. Thanks for joining us on Remember Sixty Four.